Kala Maria is a bit weird to S rank, mainly because she's very RNG dependent. This means that it's mostly up to luck whether you can get some requirements or not, but still here I am to try to help you as much as I can. Now, I know I say this for every plane boss, but Divine Relic really is the best charm to use here. The con of your weapon switching is way outweighed by all these charm effects you get. And trust me, you'll need some of these charms. If you don't have Divine Relic, you could honestly try using Miss Chalice here. She starts out with extra HP, and her weapons here are actually very effective for the boss itself. Other charms you could use are of course Heart Ring and Smoke Bomb. If you do have the DLC, however, I would heavily recommend either using a Mist Chalice or Divine Relic, and I would heavily encourage you get Divine Relic for future S ranks. Now let's get into the boss fight. So, Cal Maria is one of the few bosses that you might struggle with getting the time requirement for. This is mainly because her first phase is one of the longest phases in the game if you're not consistently dealing damage and spamming supers or EXs. For context, in this footage, from the first shot that dealt damage to the last, it took me roughly 40 seconds to get to her next phase, and this is considering that I am very experienced with Cuphead as a whole and with luck involved as well. This might not sound like a lot, but considering her other phases and how much time and luck is involved with them, this is in my opinion at least a significant amount of time. This is part of the reason why Divine Relic excels more for this boss than other plain bosses. The enhanced coffee aspect of Divine Relic allows you to spam EXs and charge super very quickly, and should be taken advantage of 100%. Now for Calamaria's first phase, she summons many fish friends that you need to be aware of, and sometimes you'll have to dodge two different attacks at the same time. But first, we'll go through each minion and attack separately. First are the Ghost Pirates. These are actually quite simple to dodge. The pirates will be shot out from her mouth, pause for a second, then home in on your last position. Simply move downwards quickly once they start moving. After going against this attack enough, you will immediately get a sense of when to dodge, making this attack surprisingly easy to counter. The problem with this attack is when it's combined with another attack, like the Pufferfish. Speaking of the Pufferfish, this is one of the few attacks you'll be able to get parries for, so try your best to get as many parries as possible here. The Pufferfish's grouping patterns are quite random, but they'll typically either be close together or spread out. The Pufferfish are split up into sort of sections, and every third section there should be a parryable Pufferfish, so now you know when you need to get ready and get your parry. Also, you can use the Whetstone feature from Divine Relic to easily get rid of Pufferfish in one attack. From here on out though, it's going to be up to you to dodge and survive this attack. She also has two fish attacks. The yellow fish shoots an eel that follows you around for a bit, and simply just moving around in a circular motion typically works. The red fish shotguns projectiles towards you, with a couple of the shots being parryable, but this is not a consistent way of getting parries, so while you should try to parry any attacks you can, don't sweat it if it's too far away. There are also some minions which will come from the bottom to mess with you, namely the turtle and the seahorse. The seahorse simply sprays water upwards towards you and tracks you so you can't completely escape it but you can just move left to right to counter this. The turtle shoots a bomb upwards that explodes and releases projectiles in 8 directions. The turtle will move across the screen from right to left, and shoot around 3 times before leaving. The projectiles are pretty spaced apart, so simply staying farther back and staying between the gaps is all you need to do. Well, that should be all the different types of attacks during just the first phase. The main difficulty is being able to dodge multiple of these attacks at once, and some combinations are worse than others, but nonetheless, this is really up to you to mostly deal with all the different types of attacks. Phase 2 has some luck involved, and you want to get past this phase typically as fast as possible. I would advise having your super for this phase, namely to dodge her first petrification attack. When you hit her with your super right before she does her attack, you'll have invulnerability frames that will allow you to not be petrified. This is actually the same for when you take damage before her petrification attack. There is also a space above her head that you can dodge her attack, but you won't deal any damage in this spot and you will be heavily at risk of getting hit by an eel attack. Speaking of the eels, she will summon many eels from time to time that basically do the same attack as the red fish from the first phase, but with so many eels, there will be a lot to dodge, and sometimes undodgeable even. This is why there is a luck aspect involved with this phase in my opinion. No matter what, you'll get petrified by Calamaria, and it's completely up to chance whether you'll get hit by one of the eel attacks while you're trying to break out. This is also why you could take out the eels to mitigate this, but honestly, it typically is a waste of time, because you won't be able to deal any damage to Calamaria, and thus keeping yourself in this phase way longer than you need to. 
getting petrified constantly as well. So I advise trying to hyper-focus on Calamaria and using as many EX or supers as you can to get past this phase, since this phase is only the start of your petrification troubles. Of course, get any parries from the ill attacks as you can, since this is the last phase where you'll be able to get any parries. Phase 3 is quite similar to Phase 2, where she'll still petrify you consistently, but in a narrow coral cave with obstacles in the way. She'll spit out skulls that float across the screen while spike columns come up from time to time. I would advise staying as far back as comfortable so you have time to react to her petrification wave and position yourself where you don't get hit by a spike column or by a floating skull. Sadly, all you can do about being petrified is mash all the buttons you can until you break out, which is why positioning yourself correctly is vital to keeping your S rank. There are also some times where you can completely go around the wave, but most of the time the coral is in the way, so you can still try to dodge it, but I can't guarantee it'll work. Try to EX or super as much as you can, and that's pretty much all there is to talk about S ranking Calamaria. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this video, even though there weren't many real tricks to make this easier. But hopefully explaining each attack and how to counter it aids you in your S rank journey. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing the video to help out the channel. With all of that, best of luck with your S ranks.